In today's mega news, we're recapping the last three weeks of Rockman X Dive. Ringing in the new year of virus? Completing Organization 13 with Four Farmer X? Why does every and talking about that new girl in town. All that and more coming up on today's roundup. Let's rock! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Mega News Roundup for January 10th, 2022. Coming to you from Shadowrock ZX and now the Mega Man Network. Starting today, you can check out this Mega News video and future episodes and maybe some more videos beyond that on the mmnetwork.com slash category slash tmmn dash tv. The Mega Man Network TV section is sparse right now, but this is only the first Mega News of the new year, and we do got plans for content down the road, so you'll definitely see that section getting filled up as time goes on. In the meantime, definitely check out the Mega Man Network for editorials, news, and all that jazz too. It just opened up for business again for the first time in quite a while last week, so welcome back! And hey! Again, welcome back to you guys as well. I hope you had a wonderful holiday break. And welp, it's back to business with us. We have three weeks worth of mega news to catch up on. So this video is going to be pretty long most likely. And because we have so much to cover, we're actually going to be splitting up this mega news right up into two parts essentially. Today we're just going to recap all the Rockman X Dive stuff and talk about the new stuff for this week. And then the next Mega News Roundup that we will produce, we're going to talk about everything else outside of Dive. So please stay tuned for that. Now let's strap in, get your battle chip cereal ready, and let's go. As we have always done it here on the Mega News Roundup, we're kicking things off in the deep log with Rockman X Dive. We may have been on break for a little while, but Dive did not slow down at all as it's been coming out with new characters, new events, and new content every week. So that means that we have two whopping weeks of Dive content to recap before we even get to what's going on this week. Rockman X Dive ended off 2021 and rung in the new year simultaneously with a rerun of the auspicious dream of the new year event. And while that in itself is not new at all if you were paying attention a year ago, there is a new, haha, <laughs> get it, New Year character to cover. And yep, it's none other than New Year Iris. She's back, and she wants her third place spot for most alternate characters back from base. No seriously, they're tied at this point. Five characters each. That's kinda crazy. As for New Year Iris's kit, at a glance at least, she does seem better than New Year Cinnamon. Then again, New Year Cinnamon also got DNA, which does make her a bit better as well. New Year Iris's first skill is Demon Breaking Arrow, which is a straight shot projectile, but hey, it can also stun. And then you can combo that into her second skill, New Year's Dawn, which deals a ton of multi-hitting damage. It has a decent area of effect, and she can heal herself off of New Year's Dawn. Not too shabby. As for the chips, the Demon Break and Arrow chips allow Iris to debuff her opponent, which obviously is mostly useful in PvP. The chips for New Year's Dawn adds on to the advantage in PvP by making Iris half resistant to things like stun, slow, no weapon, no skill, or the third chip can just get rid of all the negative statuses when she casts the skill. On top of all of that, with her passive skills, New Year Iris is also a tank. Starting out with a hefty 40% defense buff, and following that up with a 40% attack buff. And once that wears off, her 5 star passive renewal will just give her all the buffs, including an acceleration effect on top of that before the whole cycle begins anew. So yeah, on paper at least, she does have it all for a PvP character. Disruption, buffs for herself, and healing too. 
Now, is she meta though? Well, I'm not actually too sure about that because I don't have her myself. But definitely tell me in the comment section below if you have New Year's Iris at 5 star and what do you think about her? Is she really good or is she just okay? In addition to New Year Iris and the rerun of the New Year event, we also had the ongoing free pulls for the A rank character or S rank character. And then of course we had our free S rank character on New Year's Day itself. Personally I just got a dupe in the form of Flax, Falcon Armor X. I was kind of hoping for Harp Note so that was pretty disappointing but hey I can't complain about the free patches. It definitely gave us a ton of character patches to play around with. So guys definitely also tell us in the comments how many S ranks did you get from the free pools and did you get anyone new? I didn't, but I did get some nice S rank patches at least a couple of times. So again, I can't complain. Moving on to the banner and events that came out last week, which is the current running content as I'm recording this video. First up, we have Guild Boss with the return of Sigma Virus for Mex 2. And you guys know what comes next. Oh yes. Everybody's favorite Maverick Hunter with the most alts in the game has another new alt, Nova striking into the fray. Ah, I remember when Dive first came out, and we were all wondering, since Ultimate Armor X already exists, is there even a point to including 4 Farmer X into Dive? Would it be too redundant? Well, yes and no. They're both gonna have Nova Strike, but I've always said that 4 Farmer could at least have stock charge shots from the original X4 game. That way it can at least differentiate itself from Ultimate Armor X's plasma charge shot. And well, what can I say? Capcom Taiwan did the thing. And it's exactly as I predicted. Skill 1 is the stock charge shot and skill 2 is Nova Strike. Although it works a little bit differently from Ultimate Armor X's Nova Strike. We'll get there in a second. Because I do want to comment on this awesome animation from the character select screen. Where they actually showcase his hover ability in a way. And yeah, he just spins on in and does his charge shot thing in a very flashy manner. Really awesome animation. And finally, it does end off on an obligatory character art pose from Mega Man X4. Good stuff. My god. Oh god. I gotta gush about the artwork too because this is my second favorite armor design wise and oh yeah it's just great to have 4 Farmer X finally in dive. The artwork itself continues the trend of X pointing his buster at something to his right. Somewhat reminiscent of Dive Armor X's animation actually but not quite at the same time. There's some differences. Okay finally let's talk about the skills. As we know, skill 1 is stock charge shot and it works exactly like it does in X4. When you initiate the charge, X will stock up with 4 different charge shots. Yes, a whopping 4. Watch out Vile. And since you really don't have to worry about iframes too much in dive, this suddenly makes the stock charge shot way more useful than it was in the original game, at least in my opinion. Once charged up, you can choose to fire each of the four charge shots at your own will by pressing the button, or with the third chip, X can unlock All Out Barrage, which allows him to fire all four energy rounds at the same time. That's a good half of your opponent's health in PvP right there. And for the other half of that health, well, that's where Nova Strike comes in. Now whereas Ultimate Armor X can spam his Nova Strike up to 3 times now thanks to his DNA code, 4 Armor X can only get it out once at a time and that's after charging up his armor energy. A returning mechanic from some of the other armors such as Second and Falcon. Same sort of deal, when time passes or X takes damage, the armor energy will fill up. In addition, this time around he does get a passive skill that allows him to use his charge shot to gain even more energy. And with that, 4 Farmer X actually does get his Nova Strike back pretty quickly. Not to the point that you can just spam it like Ultimate Armor X, but it's not too bad nonetheless. It does a serious amount of damage to your opponent, and you're invincible during the dash, so yeah. 
not the worst. Unfortunately, the biggest downfall of 4 Farmer X is the rest of its kit is rather boring. The Nova Strike chips can either increase its power or allow you to get even more armor energy back. For the passive skills, he does get Destroy Armor, which is nice for that defense reduction, but otherwise he just has the usual armor protection, Buster Mastery, and lastly an enhancement for his Nova Strike at 5 stars. So in conclusion, and this is just my opinion, I do not believe 4 Farmer X is the best X out there. I would still give that to the likes of 3rd Armor X or Dive Armor X, but 4 Farmer X doesn't really need to be the best because he's a permanent character. Yeah, mind blown, he's not Dive Fest? What? Don't worry, Dive Fest is coming up right after this. So while he's not the best, he's not the worst either. He's actually pretty decent for a permanent character. He's definitely got some good damage output going for him. Being capable of taking out a PvP opponent in one go if they allow you to combo your stock charge shot into Nova Strike. And hey, he actually gets his hover ability, look at that. Now the question remains, when are they going to backport that to Ultimate Armor X, uh, what's that? That's just Magnus Centipede doing his thing, making him levitate? Oh, Capcom, you uh, sneaky people. Well, but I guess we'll just have to keep watching the character select animation for 4 Farmer X and just dream, just dream that he does have hover. One day, my man. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention. The Japanese Dive Twitter page posted this image with all of the Mega Man X's released so far, including 4 Farmer. And wait a minute, I count 13 X's. No, it can't be. It's Organization 13! And you know something? Every member in Organization 13 in Kingdom Hearts has an X somewhere in their name. It all makes sense now. Oh man. Darn it Nomura, even in the deep log we can't escape your memes. Along with 4 Farmer X came a new S rank launcher weapon. And I know I'm going to butcher this, but I say it's Will. Which is based on the launcher that Kraft Mac and Cheese himself from Mega Man Zero Four used. And actually, this weapon is really funny because the laser that it produces reaches really dang far. It can target a PvP opponent from across the map. And not only is that itself a problem, but you can also combo that into things like Proto Man EXE Step Sword to instantly zip across the entire stage. Holy Boudicus, what were they thinking of that one? But you know something guys, I think I can talk about a girl whose time came way too soon. Because yes, the time has come to discuss Dive Festival, which is this week in Dive. Coming up on January 12th, 2022. And who is it? Whose time has come way too soon? Well, it's that new female antagonist character who it really feels like it was just yesterday that we just met in the storyline. And her name is... Droit Claire? Draw Claire? I've been personally told that it's Draw Claire. So I'll just go with that. But if I get it wrong anyways, blame my stream chat. But anyways, moving on. Last time we saw Draw Claire revealed in the event where they showed off the other two antagonist female characters as well. Though we haven't seen the designs for them yet. And then in the story chapter that came out not too long ago, featuring Shade Man stage from Mega Man 7, we got to hear a lot more from Draw Claire and learn a little bit more about her personality. And the official Twitter page for Rockman X Dive Asia does sum it up for us. Draw Claire, the original character from Dive. She has two of the extremely different personalities at the same time, but timidity. What what is timidity? I don't freaking know. She has a timid heart but the courage to challenge. The small bag carried around her seems to hide her battle partner. Which by the way, the battle partner appears to be an evil spirit. So that's fun. But yeah, she's already playable. What the heck? I thought she was supposed to be an antagonist character. Was I mistaken about that? Because honestly, it's really hard to follow Dive's storyline. I'll be 100% honest there. 
It's really hard to take anybody seriously in this game, story-wise at least. And especially Draw Claire's chapter in Shademan stage. Oh man, that was so hard to follow. Literally, what the heck is going on with this game? I wonder sometimes. But I guess that's part of the charm of this game, I guess. Point is though, we just met Draw Claire here. And she's already playable. We didn't even get a boss fight introducing what she's all about or how she fights no nothing like that it's just okay here you go she's playable now and of course she's limited dive festival exclusive but that's to be expected and then we have another controversy which is well her design the denizens of the d blog if you will are saying that draw clear really doesn't look like a Mega Man x character at all and she doesn't really fit in the Mega Man universe in general just because of her design and i can definitely see that her design does give off the vibe of a goth witch from an anime and i got nothing against goth girls but it is definitely a different direction to take for a supposed Mega Man character that said i'm gonna come to her defense a bit and just say well at least she's not the most human looking character we've seen so far in dive did you guys forget about swimsuit roll with her freaking toes? Whereas with Draw Claire here, at least she has the X8 style robot legs. There's some other minor robotic like details too, like the cuffs around her wrists. But admittedly, that's all she has going for her in that department. The only other way I can explain her design is something that the devs of Rockman X Dive were talking about when they were discussing how they came up with Rico's design a while back. As the story goes, at first they didn't really know what to do with Rico's design, and that's because they didn't want to limit themselves necessarily to the rules of a Mega Man X character when making Rico. It was actually okay if Rico looked like an entirely different thing that's not Mega Man like. Of course, at the end of the day, they ended up making her look like a Reploid anyways, but if we consider that philosophy that these new characters for Dive don't need to look like a Mega Man character, well, I can see how that philosophy was applied to characters like Draw Claire here. Now, whether you agree with that decision yourself, well, that's for you to figure out. I'm just a messenger in all this. Please don't shoot me. Meanwhile, Draw Clear's character select animation gives me Pokemon Sun and Moon vibes, with the purse being unable to contain the evil spirit within. Darn it, Nebby, I told you to stay in that bag. I think it's time to talk about her skills. Skill 1 is Evil Calling. As the trailer says, Draw Clear unleashes an evil spirit to deal damage to the target, and it can even mark the target which means marked targets can take even more damage from the skill. Otherwise, Evil Calling appears to be a two-stage skill, a straightforward projectile into a 360 sweep around her with a pretty dang wide radius. Next up is Evil Spirit Barrier, which protects Draw Claire from attacks and it does continue to damage targets that it touches. I gotta say too, these summoning circles look awfully familiar. Oh no, it's Halloween Roll 2.0. The trailer goes on to reveal a couple of interesting passive skills. First of all, when Draw Claire reaches below 35% health, she unleashes a bunch of giant evil spirits all around her, which essentially becomes a screen nuke at that point. The trailer doesn't mention if it's a once per stage sort of thing, but it sounds like it at least. Furthermore, when Draw Claire is attacked, there's a chance that she can unleash an evil spirit. So instead of poopy mind, she poops evil spirits. Nice. And yep, that's all I got for you guys for Draw Claire the character herself. Weird design, yes, but she does look pretty powerful. Might be a fun character to try out. And if you are at all interested in trying out this character that we arguably got way too soon, she will again be available in Dive Fest this Wednesday. And of course, in order to get the lore of how the heck she became playable so fast, we gotta play the new event stage that features Draw Claire herself. 
And from the footage in the trailer, we can deduce that the stage takes place in Flame Mammoth stage this time around. Kind of boring, but whatever, I guess. More details for the event stage should be revealed on the social media channels for Rockman X Dive in the coming days, so be sure to keep a lookout for that. And finally, for you global Mega Man X Dive players, I'll throw you a bone this time and tell you that this week is going to feature the Monster Hunter Rise event. Yep, it's coming to global. There was a time when we thought it might not have because of rights issues, but looks like that's been resolved, so nice. And you guys playing the global version are actually pretty lucky because thanks to a Twitter campaign, you guys are getting a whopping full week of free tin poles each day. So there's a good chance you're probably going to end up with Hunter R or Hunter V. And then Raffalo's Armor X will be next week. And then for the Latin American server, over in that hemisphere it's actually summer. So instead you guys are getting swimsuit lair and swimsuit roll and all the events that come of that. Otherwise, that's all for our dive news roundup for today. And guys, we have many, many, many more news topics to cover from the last three weeks. And even with dive, this video is getting quite long already. So guys, next mega news, we shall return with the rest of the topics that we have yet to discuss, which is going to be everything that's not dive related. Please stay tuned for that, and I want to thank all of you guys for watching. As always, stay tuned to Shadowrock VX for all things Mega Man. It's a brand new year, so we have a whole year's worth of Mega Man content coming up, and hey, maybe if we're lucky we'll get to talk about a new game this year too. Wouldn't that be something? Beyond that, be sure to check out the Mega Man Network at the mmnetwork.com. There you can read editorials, news articles, listen to podcasts such as the Fully Charged podcast, and yes, you can also check out the new The Mega Man Network TV section, which will be my section for the Mega News videos and any other video content we choose to post there. Like I said before, we got some cool plans, so I hope you guys will stay tuned to that. And finally, if you enjoyed the content like this one, it would mean a lot if you would consider becoming a Shadowrock ZX channel member. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help us out with making these videos happen every single week. We literally cannot do it without you guys' support. And those of you who have already been supporting or even just watching the videos, we really do appreciate you guys. And definitely that includes our GA class supporters, LML123, Vince Crystals, Adrian Cauldron, Chaos Bankai, Rico Syndrome, and Austin Boofer. Other ways you can show your support is by tipping through PayPal in the description below. And besides that, yeah, just watching our videos, joining us for the live streams that we host almost every single day, and spreading the word really does help us a lot, so thank you. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and an even better tomorrow. Until the next video, rock on.